Ladies and gentlemen, the TSP boys are back. And damn, does it feel good to be back after such a long hiatus. On this episode of 149 in the season six premiere of TSP, we're going to pull back the curtain a little bit, go over our personal lives and discuss the goods and bads of everything we've gone through during that hiatus. Some reasons why we left after season five and the reasons why we're back for season six after 400 plus days. On this season, we're also going to premiere some new segments. We have a new sports gambling segment where we're going to go over some props that we like and also feature the D'Lo Monday Night Football Lock for this NFL season. Be sure to follow that prop if you want some free cash. We're going to go over some food because what's TSP without a little food talk? Joe the Greek on this episode, we go over some meats that he smoked and show some images for our YouTubers as well. And we're going to bring around the mill with Dill back. So stay tuned for all of that. If you like the show, be sure to like, share, follow, subscribe. It really helps us out to get the algorithm out, to get to new listeners. And as always, be safe, and we'll see you next week for the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. This is not a mistake. What you're hearing now, this is the updated shit. This is no longer Talking Shop Podcast. This is TSP. This is season six. This is episode 149. Same show. We're shortening shit up. We're changing some things up, rearranging some stuff. Same cast of characters. It's great to be back. I'm your host, Bobby Hall. And you know who's with me. We got Dylan the Savage. And we also got Joe the Greek. Gentlemen, it's good to see your faces. What's going on? Oh, shit. He's fucking hyped up already. Let's go. He's, got the, energy. He's got the fucking crystal ball of, of power right there. So how could you not? <laughs> Some sort of you, see what's next to it. <laughs> you see what's next to it. Could be in a fucking case, if you ask me. Fedora. Yeah. You know, this is almost, you can consider this as like some kind of like talking shop uh, memorabilia, if you will. Well, you sold a poster Those, last year. Yeah, we, the poster that's uh, hanging in. You signed that. I mean, shit, man. Yeah. Who, who knows? You sold the poster for what, 75? <laughs> yeah. I can go easily for triple digits. Just make oh. sure it comes with a life preserver because whoever wears it is going to be swimming in it if you dig. Oh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And I agree 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Easy. I mean, yeah, fedoras will never go out of style. Everyone knows that. Mm. At least anyone with a sense of fashion knows that. Um, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work with the headphones. So, with respect, I keep it in the picture um, right there. <laughs> Starting season the six sign. the way season five ended for those talking shop lifers out there. And who knows that I uh, did fulfill my promise on the wheel spin that we had on a TSP live where I wore a fedora. Yeah. And, um, like I was kind of saying in the little intro there, we, uh, we changed some stuff up and that this, this episode here, we're going to get into all of that. We're going to get into kind of why we faded out in season five, how we got here back into season six. Um, I mean, there was talks of just totally scrapping. Well, there wasn't talks. We announced that we were scrapping, Talking Shop podcast, and we were going to try to jump into a different venture on the podcast side of things. And um, there was some talks, you know, a few th different things, but they just sort of fizzled out. And I think that um, us three as collective, we just needed a, a break. And uh, it just went a lot further along, you know, than we had ever imagined it would be. I mean, we're in the 400 day count. So, you know, well over a year, I think 14 months to be exact, maybe 15, somewhere along those lines. So um, I guess we kind of jump 
back to you know June of 2022. We had just um, capped off. A, I mean, the best year of the podcast for sure. Um, a lot of great uh, guests, and now that's another thing we'll touch on too um, that we're gonna be changing up. But a lot of great guests. Um, I think viewership definitely went up. We implemented uh, YouTube. We did live streams. Um, we did some donation wheels, and uh, that money definitely went a long way and helped uh, you know keep um, quality and such uh, at, at a pretty good standard for for uh, what we were looking for. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, but some of that stuff too. I mean, because I, I actually went back and listened to a lot of season five. Um, a few months ago and a lot of that stuff you know we had discussed in those final few episodes of, of what at least how I was feeling I mean, these guys agreed as well that kind of we're getting a little bit of a burnout feeling because we kind of tried to to take all our eggs and put it into kind of being like this monetized you know um uh, I don't know super corporate show. style you know show and when the numbers weren't coming in um on youtube and maybe obviously on the um podcast app side as well it was just became very discouraging and um it just plus just trying to to line up a guest every week because that kind of became a thing too it was just at least for me i was always just trying to line up a guest basically Mm -hmm. every single week and it just got to be um quite the task and um we know you know when those people would say no, they weren't interested or leave it, you know, leave me on red if I'm reaching out or say they're interested. And then, you know, when it comes down to it, then they decide to kind of ghost you. That was another part of it. And then also, like, I had a lot of issues going on in my own life as far as like mental health stuff, which is some stuff that I'll, I'll definitely be touching on throughout this season and just kind of um, stuff that I was dealing with, some of the cause, root causes that I, I think were happening. And, um, yeah, kind of some ways that I've kind of helped been able to navigate and weave my way through that. Um, it's definitely been quite the battle, but all that stuff, you know, came to a head and we just kind of said, fuck it. We're going to, we're going to, um, end talking shop podcast and see what, where we go from there. And the original plans were to shut, you know, shut the lights off until the end of last year and then come back and see where we're at. And that is kind of where we, what did happen. We got, we got into about the fall, early winter, and I remember reaching out to these guys saying that I kind of wanted to do like a food-based show, um, which had a pretty fire name. You know, what I'm <laughs> I was a big fan of it. I don't, um, I don't know. If we, I don't even share. Just I'm gonna keep it in the back burner. Yeah, and so I'm saying, so we'll keep that one on the back burner. You never know if if this thing eventually blows up or we could become millionaires and can open a studio. That might be a little side project, but <laughs> we had a food based show. Oh, good. Um, and we were kind of trying to talk, toggle some things where, uh, you know, we, we would have me and Joe kind of more on the main focus and then Dylan be kind of like an on screen producer type thing. And we were discussing some of that stuff and um, kind of figuring out if that was the right thing to do. And then those talks just kind of fizzled out um, because of a lot of different things, which we'll touch on, you know, uh, personal sides as well which most is good. Um, and then uh, just communication in general just ceased, you know, for probably a good s- six or seven months. Just, we also got and, so uh, busy. And, and that's the thing. You I mean, know what I mean? It wasn't necessarily like there was any sour, you know, grapes for, on, on anyone's part. It was just um, each one of us kind of just had our own shit going. And then that all that stuff fell by the wayside, unfortunately. Um but I think around end of May, June, I just decided to like, go back um, and just listen to, I think it was pretty much all of season five. I might have even got into season four, too, and I was just listening to that shit. And um, I started getting the itch. I'm like, I really miss this. Like, I don't have a lot of hobbies, and this is one thing that I think uh, I think we're pretty good at. It's fun. It's uh, you know a great way to, to stay in touch uh, with these two guys and uh, also – um, it's cool to um, be able to appease the the folks that come in and enjoy the show and uh, report back every week pretty much, you know, on, on the things that they uh, enjoy listening to. But, uh, yeah, I got the itch and, and reached out to these guys in the group chat saying, hey, um, I want to get back into podcasting. Um, I know – I don't know where you guys are at. Like, I, I can go, you know, this route solo. I'd love to have both of you with me. 
but I can go solo if I need to. And then there was mutual interest all around. And um, we had a couple FaceTimes and kind of discussed, you know, what we wanted to do, some things that we wanted to change up, like like the name itself. Just everyone. I mean, for the last year and a half, we've called Talking Shop Podcast TSP anyway. So let's just call it TSP, you know, short and sweet. And um, we'll do some little changes and stuff. So um, I guess we'll kind of segue into a little bit of that. Uh, before we kind of, you know, I'll let these guys share what, what they've been up to in the last year. But, um, yeah, we're going by TSP. We're still shooting for the Monday releases. We're going to be a lot less guest-based. I mean, we got three guys as is, and that's pretty good. There's plenty at the table there. Um, we'll definitely still be bringing in some of the cast of characters from, from years past. You know, we're, we're already talking to our guy, Walt, from Michigan Barbecue X. We'll definitely have him on. Um a couple of the people that we had from, from season five uh, have been clamoring to come on as soon as they heard we were coming back. So we'll bring them on as we go. But um, for the most part, it'll just be us three every week, um, you know, talking shop. And uh, it, I think it'll be a lot better that way, not having to lean on that, that guy or a girl that comes on. And then, you know, because I was the one that booked all these people, so it'd be a lot of people that I knew. I do. I tried. Didn't necessarily know. And I tried. I got left across. on red by a dude that made shit at Taco Bell. You know, man, that made yeah. me feel. He well, was making his own shit. That, and he just um, said, Fuck you. that chick on TikTok that does toys or whatever, and she just flat out told you no. And so, I mean, you can only do what you can do. So, um, but I mean, you could see like on some of these episodes where it's like. You guys would do a little bit of research, but like you still didn't know who the fuck some of these people were. So you, you can't fake being interested in those guys. Like <laughs> it, it comes off pretty clear that you're just kind of wow. doing it, you know, so, so they don't feel like assholes. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And um, we'll, uh, we're going to be all over the place in this episode too, just kind of explaining all kinds of shit. So um, we'll, we'll get into uh, more in depth in this what exactly we'll be talking about some segments and stuff because we're gonna have some some weekly segments we're def- we got the mill coming back too that's that's for sure i know um you know people you'll enjoy that dylan's got a new chair to spin in so i know he's gonna be ready to uh to rock with that so he's already going that's there so grease the bears um, that man boy but uh <laughs> that's kind of my side of things dylan i mean you can kind of you can kind of jump back to um last summer and i mean you can kind of fill in where in, into the cracks that maybe I skipped. And then obviously you can kind of tell people, um, you know, what, what uh, you've kind of worked on professionally in the, in the past year and, and where you're at with that. Cause that obviously took up quite a bit of time because that was something that um, we talked about last fall. When we were trying to figure out what we're going to do podcast wise, but we didn't know obviously where, um, scheduling wise you would be because you were still you know in school and, and whatnot but um take the floor man yeah i mean you covered pretty much all of it i, I guess from my end of things something life-changing things that happened um it's just more of like on the work side of things career side of things um i did end up getting my cdl class a um during our break so um, it's good financially for me and the family and the household finances, but uh, I'm enjoying it. I I never really wanted to be a truck driver, I guess. I've always kind of turned it down when the opportunity came up. Uh, but now that I'm doing it and have experienced doing it uh, for a few months now, uh, since uh, what I guess I graduated the CDL school from December, beginning of December. So I've been, what, it's already September. So shit, I've been, I've been doing it for like 10 months now almost a full year in, uh, got a good deal out of it. Uh, they top you out where I work. They top you out after one year. Um, so mm. you just have to pretty much just grind it out for a year. And it's a good like experience, um, learning from the guys above me and then getting topped out, um, at your graduation date. So a year after you graduated there, maybe a week or two, depending on how like, uh, finances do their, like their payouts. I think it's like a two, two week buffer usually. Uh, for those like payouts for your paychecks. So it might be a little bit after my graduation date, but nonetheless, it's going to be a good pay raise there. Um, So I've been doing that. Um, Then you uh, 
at some point in time, like you said, messaged both of us about podcasting again. And it's funny that you did because I was talking to Jen about um, either doing some kind of like streaming or doing the podcast again or bringing it up to you guys to do the podcast again. Um, not knowing if I'd really have the time, knowing that I'm on third shift now. And I'm not sure if you already brought this up amongst of uh, what you already said, but we are all on different shifts. So you got Joe on seconds, uh, you, Bobby, on first, and I'm on thirds. So it is really kind of hard to kind of navigate that path of finding the availability to do these episodes and do the lives and also having that like strong dedication to grow TSP. Um, but you know what? When there's a will, there's a way, a wise man once said. So we do have the will. We will find the way. I, I promise you that, TSPers. And uh, that's that's going to be the new thing, too. Like you said, we always called Talk and Shop TSP anyways. Uh, but to clarify for those listening, and myself included, Bobby, TSP is really just the acronym for Talking Shop Podcast. It's not TSP Podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got it. And um, <laughs> while I'm thinking like it's, it's talking my head just now, <laughs> because people were asking, um, these episodes, they're going to still, like, if they're already, if they were subscribed to Talking Shop, these new episodes will pop into that feed, right? Like on if they're Apple already subscribed Spotify. to like Spotify, Apple. Yeah, that is I correct. Said yes. Yeah, so. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah, that's okay. correct. It's all under the same um, RSS feed. So that link, as soon as these get uploaded, it's going to be pretty much a continuation of where we left off in season five. Um, you'll be able to see those episodes on anywhere that you follow us, and be sure to follow us if you're not already. If you're a new listener, and if you are a continued listener, it's very important that you like, subscribe, share. Um, repost anything like that because it really does help the algorithms out uh, based on some research i'm um, having some more knowledge on the fact of how all these like spotify um, pushes all these podcasts to the top so like when we went live for instance um a week or two ago we uh had issues with people being able to find our live stream to begin with and i think it's just we haven't been on for so long that we were just buried under the algorithms and like usually if we go live, it'll send you like a notification if you have like the bell icon or even hell, I think even if you just subscribe to us, it might give you a notification that that person is live or at least show a red dot on your subscriptions. But if you have a lot of if you subscribe to a lot of accounts, then we could also get buried under that as well. So uh, it really just does the does depend on that. Uh, but be sure to also subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're always notified when we go live. When a new episode drops, everything TSP, it just really does help the algorithm out to also get out to those new possible listeners out there. Yeah, Boy, anyone new, don't uh, don't go down to this link down here. It says where it says YouTube.com. I'm not sure where that's going to navigate you to, but um, oh shit, would you look at if that? You, but I did what I did notice though. Cause I, that's I I just noticed that when I was thinking. But you can search now on YouTube like you would on like Twitter. So if you put at TSP underscore 2019, we're going to pop up immediately rather than if you just try to t type in TSP, like who the fuck knows what, you know, probably some Indian channel is going to pop up. So if you go on there and, <laughs> and type the you know, like at like the at sign TSP underscore 2019, our channel is going to pop up immediately, which I don't know when they started doing that, but that makes life a lot easier. Um, so when we do go on live or if you're not subscribed, because we're at 41 subscribers right now um our our first little mini milestone i guess you'd say is 50 so if you can help us get to 50 subscribers that would be awesome um otherwise you uh you can find us um you know at the usual spots spotify apple and i think most of you that are listening already have already done that so you, you'll see it pop up in that regular feed and i'm sure it'll be and those of you that you know because there might be some people that listen to us on a regular basis that don't know that we're back so they're going to pop in on a Monday morning looking at their podcast feed. And they're going to be kind of, you know, pleasantly surprised. So that'll be kind of cool for those people as well. But um, good to be back. And then to finish. All right, okay. we're gone. And then, so thanks, guys. Season <laughs> six was a blast. Yeah, see um, <laughs> a little glitch in the system. Welcome back. Yeah, you know what it is. He he uh, he wasn't mu he wasn't muted this time, so we got to get. That's gonna be on the that, new one. Is that gonna be the new thing for him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little video being yeah. gone. So, well, it was fun. Oh shit! You know, you know the Dylanism is gonna be back in full full effect, but one way or um, another, well, Dylan's <laughs> navigating whatever he's navigating with. 
Joe, um, don't mind me. You, know, you kind of uh, had yourself quite a year as well. So, I mean, you can kind of follow in with, with what you uh, know, so. I don't know where to start. I mean, obviously, I was having some health issues previous times. That's all good now. I went back to my old job. Uh, I uh, finally got my license back, my CDL back. So the next week or two, I'll be uh, back driving again. I'm happy about that. Honestly, dealing with that uh, YouTube thing, I think when you copy, did you copy the link directly to that? Sorry, I'm distracted by that. If you copy the link directly, sometimes it'll, it'll be YouTube. I'm not messing with you. Anyways. ADHD, oh, man. Whatever, don't matter. So <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I fixed I'm it. Uh, back working, training guys. Uh, barbecuing. Smoking chickens like once a week. Or shoulders for no reason, just to do it. You know, I love the game. Uh, but yeah, yeah you guys hit me I mean, that's cool. Is um, it's cool, man, because it, it had been you know you know three three years since you had worked. Because I mean, yeah, twenty twenty, uh, you weren't you know you, your your circle of people knew what was going on. Obviously, um, it wasn't necessarily like a public thing. You know, I, I had a lot of people ask questions, but I usually kind of just brush them aside because it wasn't my place to to put it out there but i mean you you brushed you know brushed with death there man and uh, i'm pretty much invincible at this point write that down yeah. I mean, you said you walk out of heaven so i mean that's... <laughs> i did say that stupid shit yeah yeah you man and, uh, and my boy nick foley man you guys are invincible guys so. you'd be surprised how tough you really are got when you gotta be yeah i i definitely i hear you man um yeah that that does remind me i still need to smoke a pork shoulder <laughs> So, I it's, get a, it's to... a nice one to start with. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be yeah. winter by the time I start smoking. So, it'll it'll right. fuck up. It's cheaper, way cheaper than anything else. Basically, that you're gonna smoke all that like chicken and shit. But yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, like you I... guys want to get into it? Roll into it. Well, I mean, like it. I got a free smoker. It's an electric smoker. All Same. Right. My my mom out there being the female Gary V. And uh, getting like a five hundred dollar Traeger smoker, electrical, for ten bucks. So it's like, and it's, it looks great. It looks like it's in a great condition. I still don't understand like, how that even happened, but yeah, I, I, nothing the way my wrong. Mom explained it. It sounded like the guy wanted to pay her to get rid of it. So it's like, she got out on a great deal. Yeah, can, yeah, um, but nothing. I mean, everything, everything works. Everything, it's got everything, all the greats. I mean, the heat. Does the heating element? Dude, shit, even if, even it te- did it, if you haven't smoked anything, you probably haven't even tested it. Have you tested it out? My mom tested it before bringing it to me. Okay. She said it works. She didn't like cook anything on it, but she turned it on, made sure everything, and then she sent me a picture, and well, she's like, "Heating is there's smoke coming bad. out of it. Hey, even if it didn't work, you could replace a few parts. You know what I mean? For right. free, you're already up. That's how I got mine. Yeah. My brother-in-law gave me one with a, yeah. a broken control panel. I bought it. Maybe twenty five bucks on Amazon yeah. and rolling smoke out that bitch for a minute now. I mean, you could fucking turn that bitch into a charcoal smoker pretty easily. So <laughs> if it didn't work, obviously, but yeah, 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 what a deal, man. I mean, so yeah, you really don't have any, you don't really have an excuse at all because that those things. I mean, you set the fucking temperature and then you can go fucking. Do the fuck whatever the fuck you want to do for ten hours. I mean, you, you gotta check on a little bit. Some people like to do the spritz and shit, and then eventually you, gotta the wood. Chips, you gotta replace the wood chips and stuff. But for the most part, I mean, that's set and forget it type shit. Shout out to Ron Pompey. That's the I think that's the biggest thing right there. Especially, <laughs> it's probably the hardest part too. Is just maintaining yeah, temperature. Gotta, come on, man. He's OG OG infomercial. Everyone knows that shit. And forget it. Fuck yeah! Dude. Shit I, watched was that, I watched that infomercial about a billion times. Oh, you grew up without cable too? Cool. That and the um the bullet blender when it first came out. Yeah, that was a great infomercial. The George Foreman and all the knockoffs were on there too. That'd be like yeah. a similar George Foreman, but this one does bread on top. Some bullshit add on the, the that nobody ever infomercials is like it was barely any. It was barely about the actual product itself. It was. Most of the fucking commercial was like, and we're gonna add a fucking thirteen piece knife set free of charge, <laughs> and that's not all. We're gonna add a fucking bread maker with it. Twenty seven thousand easy <laughs> payments of a dollar ninety nine. The fuck? Yeah. 
Oh, well. I, I yeah. tried to get my mom to buy one of those, and I begged her many times t- to get us a subscription to Zoo Books and got. Yeah, they're always enough. the Ooh. same price, too. Zoo Zoo books, all those infomercial yeah. products, always nineteen ninety five. Yeah, four, e- four easy payments. Yep. Not Sometimes yet, you get not the three that. of twenty nine ninety nine instead. I mean, clearly it worked. I mean, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I sold your ass on it. Huh? I don't yeah, think I mean, I've shit, ever bought if they TV. ran those infomercials today. I mean, fuck. I would. They, they would rope me in. Is the Home Shopping Network still a thing? You remember that? How they'd have like uh, UVC and shit. Yeah. yeah, they'd have tons of shit on there. I do remember a video where a guy was trying to sell a ladder that like went horizontal. He's like, you can just get on top of it, and it collapsed on his ass live on TV. You know what I'm talking about? And yeah. It's like, <laughs> crushed his ass in it. It was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before, store, before we jump into salad. that, because we're, we, we are we're going to be doing a lot of barbecue talk and just cooking talk in general. That'll be uh, a big seg- segment every week, um, especially because... Um, Tomorrow, because we're recording on Saturday, so tomorrow is the first football Sunday of the year. So we'll, I'll definitely be getting after it over uh, at our at show favorite Jimmy Leatherman's. So that'll be a good time, and uh, we getting after it. But guy. I wanted to get into some shit too. Like I had talked to you guys, um, you know, mental health's been a big, big thing for me in the last like year. I had a pretty like crazy episode, like probably last August, to where I had to like leave work and. Um, I remember I was, it was like, I was in BG doing some shit at work. I think I was just having lunch, chilling. And all of a sudden I felt like I was going to pass the fuck out. Couldn't breathe. It was nuts. That's why I like was able to like barely get myself out of my truck and, um, sat outside, called my boss and I was like, yo, you got to pick me up. I got to get the fuck out of here. I don't know what's going on. Like, I think I'm about to have a panic attack or whatever. And from there, Tori picks me up. I go to um, the hospital ER. I kind of explain what's going on. Like, I just, I think I'm having a panic attack. Like, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I'm okay now, but like, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck that was because it was, it was intense, man. What did they tell you? Too many baconators? But pretty much because they're like, all right. So <laughs> they had me sit in the fucking ER, which, I mean, I don't know if you've been in a hospital lately, but I mean, God damn, dude. Yes. It, it was, I sat in that er I, I stayed in that er room overnight before anyone did fucking anything and then that following day i think i had every single heart test under the sun you could possibly have a stress test fucking ekgs you know x-rays like everything and everything kept coming back negative and they just want to run the next thing and the next thing and then i kept telling these guys i'm like i think i had like a panic attack man like who what, what's what do we want to do here and they're like well let's just keep checking heart and stuff and i get it i'm a bigger dude I'm, I'm in fucking awful shape and i get it but like um i got i mean i do i have i take high blood pressure medicine like everything's regulating shit so like i'm okay um and like i said all that stuff came back negative there wasn't even one thing where like all right well this was good but we see something going on over here with that like everything came back fucking negative and they fucking discharged me and then you know a month later i got an 800 dollars bill you know, that they're fucking knocking on my door for. It's pretty cheap, fucking, though. Well, yeah, I mean, insurance <laughs> stepped in and took care of it, but still, it was just like $800 worth of shit that, like, for, like, no reason, which was annoying. So, um, I had another one of them kind of episodes a couple months later, and I was like, I called my family doctor, and I was like, this is what's going on. This just happened kind of again. Like, what do you want me to do? They wanted me to go to the ER and do the whole fucking same rigmarole again. So, I was like, fuck that. I um I'm like in our break room at work waiting for Tori to pick me up because I like had to leave work again and I look up and on our bulletin board there's like some shit like because you know in the it's pretty much like break room bulletin board shit where it's like HR and fucking this and this and this and then on the sheet it was like a thing about fucking um I think it might have been like a mental health number or some kind of hotline to call, you know, if you ever need it. So I, I dialed that and I talked to someone for like probably 45 minutes. Tori was sitting in there in the, in the parking lot waiting for me and I'm just talking to this person and letting her know. And she's like, have you been going through anything? And I had to explain that like, you know, me and my dad, I just basically had like a falling out of sorts and like that's kind of been fucked yeah. with me and just like, 
um, on top of just like the stresses of everyday life. You know what I mean? And we've talked about it before. Like we all make more money than we ever fucking dreamed we could have. And, you know, we can't really get ahead of, you know, ahead because we're also in the middle of fucking a recession and everything's going up and you know that, I mean, you guys know. So it's just like high stress fucking scenarios all over the place. And it's just, that shit's getting to me. And then she's like, all right, so I'm going to give you a list of, you know, therapists. I, I think it'd be a good idea for you to try that out. And my company, they pay for five weeks worth of, you know, therapy session shit, which is fucking awesome. But the only thing is that is kind of whack about that is like, they don't tell you any of that stuff. I, I had to find that on my own. Like no one, no one was pointing me to that. Like that would have been cool to know. And I told my boss to him, like, this is really cool that they do that. But you guys should be fucking talking about this shit on top because they, they, they preach safety all the time, but it's like driving shit. I think this is part of it too. Cause like I said, when I'm on and them, them truck having those fucking like episodes or everyone call them, like, like I can barely fucking function, let alone drive a fucking 40,000 pound truck. So, um, I got with a, I finally found a therapist. I, cause I took their list and then trimmed it down to what my insurance covered. Um, and then finally found a, a lady and, uh, we had like, my two months worth of sessions and shit and just it was you know like you thought it would she would just be like you know what's going on and and you know what and kind of go you know go through all the shit you went through as a kid and through now and just different shit and just i i had to explain because it was that um i mean you were there dude um at our boy jay's wedding at the wedding reception like you yeah. I, my, my dad had called and then he was just going off. Cause like my, they were supposed to watch my son that night while we were at the wedding and plans changed by like an hour or half hour or something. So he called me and I'm, I only answered. It was like, like eight o'clock or something. It wasn't even that late. Would he be calling me right now? He knows where I'm at. So something must be wrong. So I answered it and no, he wants to bitch at me because the plans fucking changed. And I like absolutely lost my fucking shit and that ruined my night then. And I haven't, we spoke once since then, and that and that one phone call took place about three, four weeks ago, and went south quick. And I totally like cut him out, and um, that's been kind of fuck with me a little bit too, because um, you know he's he's my dad, so it's kind of like although I I don't I don't really want to have any ties to him right now because it's just it's just cannot be that way the kid in me or whatever that used to look up to this guy is like, fuck dude, you just kind of like, like cut your dad out. So it's been like conflicting emotions and stuff. Um, and after I, like, cause I'm all over the place with this and I'm kind of turning this into my own little therapy session. That's my bad. But no, that's right. after those sessions I had with that, you know, with the ther- therapist, um, I was feeling pretty good. She kind of like taught me some like breathing techniques, which sound kind of goofy, but they, they really do work. <laughs> And um, I was in a good spot. And then I'm kind of feel like I'm going in reverse a little bit just because of what recently happened. But um, <coughs> going through all that shit um, last year on top of just like I said, getting discouraged with where the show was and stuff. That was another layer of, of, of everything. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just going through a lot of shit, man. And when our communi- communication started to cease on the podcast side of things, that just triggered some shit in my head where I like kind of felt a way about you guys too. I'm like, whoa, fuck these guys if they don't want to like. <laughs> like I- I'm always the one <laughs> to start the combo man. about about stuff, and then like it goes three messages in, doesn't go any further. Me, <coughs> and um, so forget it. So I finally just said fuck it, and then totally just like went dark and, and stuff. But, um, obviously that's not really the way I feel, but it was just a lot of different shit, man. And it was just piling on top of other shit and other shit. And, um, I say all that to say, like people, t- I mean, it sounds cliche, man, but people that, you know, always say, if you're feeling away, therapy really is the way to go, man. It was awesome. Like they really know what the fuck they're doing. And I told her from the jump, like I, don't want to be somebody that you just tell me, hey, take a bill, a pill and B pill and see you in a you know a month and turn me into a fucking zombie. I don't I don't want, I have no interest in that. 
So like she actually listened to what I had to say. And like I said, when she first talked about these breathing techniques, I'm like, what the fuck is this? But like, once I started doing, it, I was like, holy shit, like this is the real deal. So, um, if you listen to this and kind of, you know, felt like you're in that same kind of thing, like a quicksand type of feeling and just, you know, which way to fucking go. Um, therapy is the way to go, man. I'm, I, I definitely believe in it. And it's something that I think I might jump back. Cause I, I kind of just did the six to eight weeks and then I was in a good spot. So like I, we kind of went our separate ways on that, but I'm thinking about kind of picking up the phone and telling her, like, Hey, I, I think I kind of want to jump back into this shit. Cause it's never ending, man. It's one thing after another. And, um, I think it's probably good to kind of just stay, stay on track with that. But was this all like the telehealth stuff over the phone or you actually go somewhere? The most part, good days, bad days that like everyone has, but, um, that's kind of part of, uh, you know, my journey in the last year, but, I think, as you guys have seen here, I just let off a bunch of fucking steam. So having this platform back will also be a nice, you know, tool to have to, uh, you know, keep my my head wired the way it should be. Is that number just for your work specifically, or is that like a universal number? Um, I think it was specific to my job. Okay, I'm pretty sure because I, like I said, it's, I just I had to give him like work IDs and shit and then they were mm-hmm. able to like be like okay this is what the company will do and you know so forth and then that's how they were able to um because I obviously had to tell them where I where I live and shit and then they're like, here's some people from your area that uh, we go through or, or whatnot so speaking of that part did you go anywhere or was it all like the telehealth stuff like over the phone no um she was like I'm sure like just a lot, like a lot of therapists now, she's like, as soon as COVID hit, like I started doing like the video stuff mm-hmm. and she kind of realized like that's just kind of her preference now. Cause I'm sure it's way fucking yeah. easier. And, Sweat I'm, pants I'm and shit. she was probably, you know, there's probably no overhead cost now cause she doesn't have to like rent a office or whatever. So yeah. And that was cool with me. Cause like, I, I don't work a nine to five. I work a, you know, you show up at five 30 and then, you work till your shit's done type shit. So, and I told her that and, um, I, I, I would have to leave work early cause her, the latest she would do was like four, I think. So I just would have to put, we'd set our shit and I'd have to tell my boss, like, Hey, I need to be out by this time on this day, um, for therapy. And they were cool with it. So <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Of them to be it was big, down, but you go. like I said, man, like it was on that bulletin board, but like in the break room, like you don't ever look at that shit. You're in there to fucking like warm up your lunch or, you know, clock in, clock out. Like you don't stand and look at the fucking 30 sheets of paper that they hang out there. So I wish they would, they would point that out, you know, a little more. Yeah. The message board doesn't really, I don't even know why I even looked at that thing. I just was looking over there and I, I'm glad I found it. Cause um, like I said, my family doctor, they were fucking zero help. They wanted me to go. Cause like I said, they, they just assume it's always fucking, you know, heart shit. And I mean, it's cool, you know, whatever, but I'm not going to keep just paying $800 every time. I fucking, <laughs> yep. you know, check mark. You're still fan or something. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's good. It's good that you're getting better, man. I mean, I know you're not like a hundred percent and you're not all the way there and you're working on it, but like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you, you can at least see that light and, you know, you can see it from like your energy now, because like obviously you were talking about towards the end of season five, and um, you can kind of like sense it. And I mean, before you even said anything, and then maybe the listeners themselves could sense it. Like we were talking about not doing the podcast anymore a couple episodes before we stopped doing it. So, um, I mean, you can just tell like you're in a better place now, and like you're still going through some hardships, and we all have our like hardships and stuff, but you're dealing with it a lot better than some people would so yeah i mean because before like i said i stumbled upon that shit like you feel fucking lost because right um the experts that are professionals that you lean on for that stuff like they they because i i feel like it's still i mean the mental health shit it's kind of um became you know a bigger discussion in the last probably five years but if you i mean as you can finally see like you you call your family doctor. They they don't really know what the fuck to do with that. Like they just I think know. another aspect though was as a dude, you almost feel like I don't know. It's harder, you know, because I feel like a lot of people look at you like you're being a bitch, 
Or like that's another thing too, yeah. Or like that nobody gives a shit because you're a dude. Like you just fucking man up. You know what I mean? I mean, and I had talked about that with my therapist. She's just like, I can tell that you're somebody that is kind of you know bottled up a lot of that stuff because you know we're in that age bracket too where that's kind of how you were raised, like, mm-hmm. you're a dude. You don't fucking cry about nothing. Like you, you, you're the fucking quote unquote man of the house. You know what I mean? Like you're you're the tough person and you you know um you can't really show any type of emotion and stuff so i mean even with that it's like mental health is like such a hard area of like diagnostics it's just like because everyone just interprets emotion differently from different aspects or or at least um handles things differently whether it's hardships and whatnot um so like to find someone that could relate and say the right things to help either diffuse the situation inside and like i mean it's so hard because you know like someone listening to this right now for instance they could have went through something similar but they're like so what even though like for you it's kind of like turning you up inside and like you have that inner kid telling you um all these different things that like the voices inside your head you know like everyone has like that different voice in their head so that's a hard thing with mental health is just like it's not like you can't put a band-aid on mental health it's something you have to like really work through and find the right people to talk to so yeah and it's just yeah like anxiety is it's something that uh it sucks and it kind of can be triggered out of the fucking clear blue like you having a great day but your fucking brain will start sending some shit out like i don't know you just you feel nervous about something but there's nothing going on it's just you fucking but you can't shake that shit and it sucks until it just keeps building and building and building and um I fucking hate that, man. It's the worst. Yeah, And not really to, and, like, um, put, like, the spotlight on me or anything like that, but I'm kind of afraid of what I would kind of go through here in the near future, at least from the sounds of it. I haven't told any of you guys this yet, but uh, based on uh, recent emails that Jen's been getting and stuff, like, there's a very high chance that she's about to be getting deployed for six months. So um, that's going to be like a tough situation with me and like the kids and not having their mom around for six months. And I'm sure there's going to be, I'm, I have no idea how deployment goes. She hasn't been deployed yet. Um, and she doesn't know either, but I'm, I have no idea where she's going on. Huh? Like different time zone. Um, just, I don't know, with the extra help and stuff. Cause like both their grandparents, like you would think like, Oh, just get a grandparent. They can come live with me for a little bit and help out and whatnot. So I don't have to like kind of drastically change my, career time and all that kind of stuff like work and th- now that adeline's in school like she can't just like you can't pull her out of daycare type of things like she has to go to school now so um but both her grandparents work so that's that's the thing so juggling all that on top of already having like the stresses of what we have today it's like i'm going to be concerned um will we get through it of course just got to find a way but trying to think of how to juggle all that stuff without it actually happening yet. It's already stressing me out. So sure. I mean, it's a lot, that's a lot to, uh, to have to deal with, man. On top of, I mean, at the, at the very fucking base core of it all, your fiance is about to be deployed. You know right. what I mean? Even if you didn't have kids or anything like that, that in itself, you know, that's a lot to, to take in. So you start, and then you start adding in, yeah, two kids and one's in school and trying to figure out because you work third shift so yeah I mean, yeah I, I get it man i mean that's gonna be a lot so that's one of those things where like don't feel like you gotta fucking juggle that shit and be the fucking tough dad and and, and stuff like ask people for fucking help man and like do what you gotta do because don't don't keep it bottled up that's 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 one thing i've i've definitely learned is the bottle up thing is just the fucking absolute worst case scenario so I'm good at that but, too, so I can relate. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like I think it's a lot of people's default. Bury that shit. <laughs> yeah, push like it. I said you're a little bit younger than us, but like you, I think you're still a part of that that last part of the generation where it's that's the default thing to lean on is just whatever. I got I got A, B, and C going on, but like I'll deal with that later type shit and. uh yeah, and the later comes up. It just grows, yeah. Convenient at times. <laughs> yeah. Usually does. So hopefully, uh, I mean, I know uh, you and Jen seem to, like, 
plan shit out pretty well. So, I mean, at least you kind of know that's on the horizon. So you can kind of at least start looking around for what options you got to take. I don't know if that would mean you'd have well, what's to her do... job? Like what she do right now? I would just, I don't know the specific verbiage of it. Um, I always forget, but it's more so like logistical stuff. Like yeah. she ships stuff out. Like when she was in Florida, she did a different job. It was like more desk and computers and ordering parts and all that kind of stuff and making sure everything runs fluently. Uh, now here in Ohio, she's uh, more of like warehouse and like packaging and, Right, so there's nothing like, like physical labor stuff because they don't have what they had at Florida here in Ohio. It's like well, at least it's nothing like crazy like front line shit, you know? Right? Yeah, I don't think like she's getting deployed for war or like combat or anything like that. But nonetheless, I mean, her absence is going to be felt. Yeah, sure. that's and yeah, I wasn't going to downplay that. I'm just, oof, at least, you know, right? Yeah. At least that's one less thing. You know what I mean? It's, that she's going to be gone, but not like. In danger because that was my right. first thought when you said. I mean, I think probably anyone's first thought when you say she's getting deployed is, I mean, she's about to be fucking over there in Ukraine or some shit or <laughs> wherever. Hey, I don't I even know not. what the she fuck they would. Yeah, she send doesn't us. know what assignments are or anything like that. She just got the email of like because she's in the phase uh, C for anyone in the Air Force. I, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. I want to. I don't want to butcher it, but. She's in phase C, which means that she's like in a grouping of people who are going to be the first people to be deployed if there is a deployment needed. And uh, because she hasn't been deployed yet and she's been in the military for like six years and obviously having two kids along those th- – within those six years kind of like is the reason why because you, they're not going to deploy someone who's pregnant and we had them back to back. But nonetheless, she got an email saying that she has to get this specific training done by October 1st. Um, and it's like all computer stuff, like basically what we have at our everyday jobs, like those little like webinar stuff you pretty much go through. Yeah, slides. Right. And, um, uh, she's click, like, click, 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 right. So she's all prepared <laughs> and stuff. So everyone in that phase, uh, has to get that training done for prepared deployment. Uh, she has no date of when or a location to where, but, with that being said, I mean, it's inevitable that it's probably going to happen. So I, I jokingly said, maybe we should try for our third now. So <laughs> Ooh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's six months or another 18 years, <laughs> man. I don't know. Get out of jail free card, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to stress about it right now. I'm going to push it down for right now. Yeah, push it that one <laughs> we'll deal with later. <laughs> yeah, I'd let future Dylan. I feel you know what's shitty about this. Like we've been talking about it. Like sometimes that's the option. Like the only option. Like I just gotta trench through this fucking mud pit right. and call life. There's no way. Like that's it. There's no. You can talk about it. You still gotta deal with it. Though. You know what I mean? Just yeah, you gotta pick and choose your battles. Yeah. Fuck it. Some shit, yeah, like I mean that's the thing it. too. Is like, even when you go through therapy, it's it's not something where like the next day you know you snap your fingers and then it's you know you clear as day. What? Happy go lucky. Did it work shit. like that for you? It's still gonna fucking you know you're still gonna <laughs> run into shit because you didn't get rid of thirty me, years man, of fucking problems. Life is just it's the one one fucking shit mess, and then you get you finally get through that, and then the next one comes and slaps you in the fucking dick. So you know, but yeah. Time oh, sucks. We get through it. Yeah, I know, man. And we and that's when I was little. I wanted to be a fucking adult. I mean, it's cool to eat ice cream, whatever. But I just wanted to be know. the guy that hung off the back of the they garbage truck. They didn't tell you truck. that you got to take fucking medication if you do eat ice cream for dinner. So they need to. <laughs> so yeah, speaking of medication, put that, put that in the fine print. It's like I can't even now that I have the CDL. I can't even smoke weed anymore. So that was a definitely a. Uh, Never touch the stuff. What's nice, it like? It was a nice coping mechanism when, like, you had a shitty day, come home, smoke a blunt or something like that. But hey, they'll let me destroy my liver with alcohol, but they won't let me uh, smoke a J. So until the federal government gets their head out of their ass and DOT says, hey, maybe we should, you know, have apply the same rules to alcohol that we do to marijuana. I just they were don't talking know about how they would, how they would well, do it. swab test. You could do one, you know what I mean? We we're talking about it. Uh, at work, like how, like like you know, you say you can get drunk the fucking night before, be hungover, not a big mm-hmm. deal. 
but like you can't you couldn't smoke and then like go to work you know what i mean because it's can't do that but like um if they could implement like a mouth swab test you know what i mean because that's like i think no quote me on this i think it's like 10 to 12 hours you know what i mean so that's you, all you need yeah. you went to bed you know what i mean the people you, you would cool. like because those are pretty hard to or i'm sorry pretty easy to to get past um so but, the I mean, but then you, you know, know what I mean? your dispatch would be like all right you this is your third wendy's you stop at today <laughs> we know what's going yeah, on right? <laughs> well i'm just saying like they don't like drinking on the job so like it would be the same rule yeah you don't be smoking on the job I mean, they let you smoke cigarettes and shit like that, but it's like, like they're not going to be smoking J's on the job, you know? Like, they, the same rules would apply. So if, like, yeah. you have a suspicion or if you have an accident or anything like that, if that pops up, obviously, if you're drunk, well, fired, high, fired. Look at like, where we're at now. I mean, it's still not even legal across the country. So, I mean, it's well, going to be what's the ratio of that? argument there. It's, I wonder how many eight, states are. I don't even think it's a third of the states yet. Mm-hmm. I know, I, mean, finally, I know Ohio's finally on it in November or whatever. And even though I won't be able to partake, you know, I'll be voting yes for that for sure, you know. 24 states. Oh, it was really half, huh? Mm-hmm. I, damn, it felt like a lot less than that. Yeah. Like recreate like totally recreational, or is that like uh, yeah, like medicinal? I gotta so I feel like the ones that are like totally rec rec are uh I'm a looking different thing. Legal says, man. Okay, this is having a battle, baby. Come on, man. Be had, <clears throat> but um, they keep passing it down or turning it down. We can, uh, we can get into because you know, Joe, we, we had your brother on. I, I, I think season four is when we had him on when he was on his like, fucking conference phone or whatever the hell he was doing. That was, it was wild. I, I was listening, no. it was crazy, but and um, you know, he's a big barbecue guy and um. You know, he, he kind of yeah. sort of passed the torch to you, man. That's that's kind of been yeah, your, man, kinda, your hobby, and uh, it's been kind of cool to see. Yeah, where, he kind of uh, inspired me, honestly. Up. All the holidays, he uh, does all the cooking and shit, you know. And uh, honestly, so he, I always wanted to do it, but I never wanted to get into it, you know what I mean? I didn't have the equipment or the time or just little things. And then actually, if we start talking to Walt, I start following my TikTok and shit. I'm like, is this motherfucker to do it? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna give it a shot. And I just, you know, then I got that smoker for free. Like I said, I just needed to buy the the control panel. So I'm all in for thirty dollars at this point. Bought a five dollar bag of wood chips. All right, cool. Let's do it. Then I bought a pork shoulder. Watched like twenty five videos <laughs> to make sure I was doing it right. Watched a bunch of Walt stuff. Like, oh, okay. Uh, Woody Malcolm. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's his name? The Daryl guy. Uh, I can never. I can't remember his TikTok right now. He always did the the barbecue and the, the cooking with Daryl. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, on the flat top. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I started watching his stuff too. Great. There's tons Are you of them. Kidding me? Yeah, dude. I little what? I know you. You said you bought like a can of that duck fat. I seen that at the store. Yeah. I was at today. It was like fifteen dollars. Do you want to do it right? Oh, fuck. Do you want to do it right? I mean, shit. How long does that last? I've Those smoked last. two or three chickens with it so far, and I still got more than half a can. Because I seen the, I because the store I went to, I seen that had that bacon up shit that that Daryl guy was using. That shit was like ten bucks, and it's like fuck. You, you just, just you. Jar it's my just own like buying a. It's like buying spices and you know rubs and I shit. Know. You don't use it all. It's just expensive. Well, my parents, like they, they used to just when they would cook bacon and shit, they just pour it into a fucking like mason jar. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna fucking uh, I do the same shit. Well, you know, yeah, back to the TikTok shit too was uh that uh, what's the name Guga Foods? That dude, you ever see his shit? He uh, Mm-mm. so I I was the most recent thing I've, I've been in smoking chickens, right? Uh, like our beer can chickens, but. Uh, I took his recipe and a couple other guys, and I like spun it in my own thing. Uh, like I use that duck fat you were talking about. Uh, makes the skin nice and crispy. It's what I use as a binder. So, you know, I've got the chicken. You know, you get all the neck parts and livers and all that good stuff. Rip that out. Spray it with the duck fat. Put my rub on it. And uh, well, the thing I did steal from that 
food guy, the Google Foods. Butter injection. Melt some butter and inject it under the skin of the breast meat. It's the juiciest, fattest thing in the world. Is that what we're but seeing in one of these photos here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull, let's yeah. pull some of these photos and we'll let, we'll let Joe tell the people. So yeah, so got, what, it was what so heavy. You should use processes. Yeah, if you see that, it's, I know there's audio, but there's, I had to use it. It's got so heavy. Oh, and yeah. I had to use a skewer yeah, for to hold that it. Up. That are like listening, not watching. Let them, let them know what we got going here. Yeah, I, I so I took a chicken and I did the beer can style chicken, but I used a can of Coke and I used a, uh, I cut the top off with a can opener, whatever, and dumped out some of it. And then uh, I put some of the rub and some butter in it. Put it in a roaster pan, filled it with chicken broth, uh, sprayed it with the duck fat we've been talking about. Uh, and then I used two different rubs. I use uh, I like the Kinder's brand, so I used uh, wood fired garlic and their um, all purpose rub. All purpose the garlic one, you know, I just like the taste of it, but the all purpose one has a little bit of a, like a peppery bite to it. I threw it in there. Uh, I smoked it with cherry wood until. It probably took like three and a half hours till it was about 155 degrees internal. And then I take it and then I'll finish in the oven at 400 or 450, depending, just to get to that 165 and finish it off. You know what I mean? That's an old two-parter. But that it's fucking crisp as shit, too. Dude, that's that duck fat, man. I'm telling you. I've done two or three of them like that now. It's one of the easiest things to do because it's done i don't know, if, I know you can't see the pictures people are listening but that uh right it's wing on the left is dripping <laughs> you see that oh yeah oh, it's yeah. dripping with goodness it's one it's of the best ones i made like call it <laughs> what'd you say i like to call it the tear joy <laughs> yeah that too that's my <laughs> it was um, good though <laughs> that's one of the more recent things i've been doing because everybody in my house likes that um I've done uh, the macaroni and cheese. It's pretty wild. I did not too long ago. You'll see. It's the only one that's. It's the one that's got the bacon on it. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So that's ridiculous. It's. I took the like shells. Um, super cheap. Like I think it's like a a two bucks for a box. So you know, I cook those up. Uh, put them in the tray, and I took. Um, a block of cream cheese, and um, I, I always shred my own cheese when I do this because if you guys get the yeah, pre-shredded stuff, it's got that coating that makes it like hard to melt, right? So I get the block, and I think I did, I don't know, let's say eight ounces of cheddar, eight ounces of, like Colby Jack. Same thing, cook it up, put the bacon on it. I smoked that with uh, applewood, and it was some of the most gooey, melty fattest macaroni in the world like thick it was heavy i had to, I had to carry it in with the tray because the pan i was cooking it, it was too heavy it started to bend in the middle of the foil tray did. little nuts this must have been before you got your bluetooth uh meat oh yeah there. that's my old one i see your yeah old dude i got a new uh now. yeah i've been stepping it up dude probably got like 40 spices sorry rubs if you want to call it that uh, I don't know how many barbecue sauces in my damn fridge. I'm going to get a whole another fridge just for those. I'm addicted to doing this shit. I can't even eat that much. That's <laughs> so stupid. I just make it to make it, man. Um, I don't know. I did a... Yeah, that's a pork shoulder I did. That was like my very first one. It's not very... See, this is an electric one right there. It's not too hard, dude. I think you could do it pretty easy. That's a... Uh, forget it. Kind of. Not for the first couple hours. So that's I spritz that. That's why it looks so white right there, and some of the rub rubbed off on the top. That's commercial uh, ready. Shit, that thing you get it pork super cheap too. I think I got that for like a hundred, hundred million dollars. Now it was like it was a, <laughs> it was like I think a, a buck fifty a pound, something like that. Yeah. That's like nine pounders. So you know what I mean? Not expensive at all, and it makes enough food to feed ten people easy. Which it doesn't look like it, but once you shred it up and sauce it up, dude, it's it's a shitload of pork. You can do a, all kinds of shit with that too, man. You can eat as is, yep. or pulled pork sandwiches. We do. I like doing. Um, I'll take some like Korean barbecue sauce and do like pulled pork tacos, nachos. Nachos is where it's at, dude. Stretch that shit out three, four days. 
the only thing with this is it's 10 piece, 10 hours piece so meat. time consuming. Like that was like yeah. 14 or 15 hours. And you kind of got to babysit it until it hits about 160 internal. Because after that, it stops taking on the smoke taste. You know what I mean? It's And it needs to go to about 205 to 210. But that's a preference thing. I've seen people go to 225 internal, which sounds insane to me. But after like 160, you don't really got to do shit. You just got to like let it get there. Yeah. That stall but, thing is fucking nuts. Dude, uh, at first I thought it was kind of a shit move to like foil wrap them. I never wrapped for like the first one or I don't know. I didn't want to wrap at all. You know what I mean? I felt like I was being a quitter by foil wrapping it. You know, the old Texas crutch. But it's a go-to move now when it's taken forever. Because I'll do shit like uh, apple juice injection and like rub and butter injection and shit. And that'll stall it out hard, dude. You know what I mean? It'll sit at the same temperature for like two hours, gain one degree. It's the worst. You feel like you're screwing it up. Nope. You're wasting 10 hours of your life. But yeah, that's not bad. You got to spritz it every hour, check your wood every hour, at least in my my smoker. You spritz it with but, what? Um, One part water, one part apple juice, and then one part uh, apple cider vinegar. Okay. So it's... These are my rib experiments. <laughs> I, <laughs> they all the same flavor different no flavors? dude they're all different ones that's the thing right okay. um i wish everybody could see this i know it's people are listening i think i did like six or seven different i think it was six of them i took three racks cut them in half right um it's all different rubs some of my own sauce i made out of combining a few other ones my go-to one as corny it is is like the sweet baby rays but I like, uh, there's a brown sugar one. I don't know if you guys ever tried that one. Okay. That is like the best one. And they also have a, um, a Chipotle one. I like Chipotle. I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It's Chipotle something. Chipotle honey. I think that's the one it is. That's one of my other favorite ones. Uh, my kid tears these up. My wife tears these up. I give them away because like, I can't eat that much food anymore. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> I made six racks and we probably ate one. You know what I mean? I just handed out meat to people at work and shit. Here, you want some ribs? You know, I have a rack of ribs for free. Because, you know, like I said, I'll get them super cheap. I'll get the whole thing for like six or seven dollars. So I don't care. You know, I'm doing it for fun. That could have been your thing, Dylan. Breakfast ribs. You, you know, you used to be a burger guy at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah. If you're still in my terminal, I'll hook you up. I mean, I'm not going to turn down a free burger if offered, you know. I mean, I know hey, I but know. it's still so weird, you know. <laughs> Here I made this. When? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Maybe it was you fresh when he picked it up. <laughs> it's so funny, though, man. I don't know if I, I have any more up. pictures on here, do I? Did I send you any? I got else? one more. What is it? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I smoked <laughs> some chips. I smoked chili cheese Fritos. And uh, also the flavor twist honey barbecue guys, and surprisingly, they got better as they sat. Like I did them, you know what I mean. I, I think I smoked them for like an hour with. I used a uh, spray butter to bind the rub to it, and then threw it in the smoker. I think I used a combination, maybe apple and cherry together, and uh, I don't know. I, don't, I think it was about an hour. I smoked them. But at first, they were kind of... What's up? I was going to say, you just did that by itself, or did you add, like, a like a ground beef to it or anything? No, like just that? those, just like that. Okay. Because uh, I stole the idea from Michigan Barbecue Addicts. I saw him do it. I'm like, well, I can do that shit. You know? So I uh, I gave it a whirl. It was surprisingly pretty good, honestly. I thought it was... You know, it didn't... It wasn't too strong of a smoky taste, but it was just, like, a different kind of snack, you know? Like, it was... The chili cheese ones were probably my favorite one to do. And I just use that all purpose rub I got in the picture. The Kinder's stuff. Did it mess with like uh like were they crunchier or so the twists were still pretty crunchy and the, the chili cheese like regular Fritos were not at first. But like the longer they I don't want to say like they dry out, if that makes any sense. Uh they got crispier, they got better. I feel like they got better and the twist ones kind of got shittier. It's kind of like <laughs> They got those got kind of like stale, and the regular Fritos got, I don't know, just 
aged like fine wine in my in my Ziploc bag. But nice. That's what I'm doing now. I mean, I've I've smoked all sorts of stupid stuff, dude, just to do it. Like uh, bratwurst. Don't don't waste your time. <laughs> Kielbasa. I've done that. Uh, I don't know, man. Pork tenderloin. That was pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I, I know you wouldn't, uh, Bobby, you wouldn't made the same thing. I made those, uh, like that Italian beef sandwiches. Mm, yep. Yeah, it was smoked that meat and then I put it in the, the broth, whatever. That was a good one, too. Yeah, that shit was fire, man. Especially Hell yeah, dude. anything you make in the crock pot where you really can just fucking set it and forget it. Yeah. Yes, Eight hours. You wake up and just fucking, <laughs> you don't got to worry about shit later. My thing is, like, I shit. love to, I mean, I do a lot of, like, Kroger pickups these days because it's just fucking easier. But if I got to go in the store, I love to go, like, I like to go early, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And there's obviously a lot of positives. That one, there's nobody fucking there for the most part, which is great. It's not shoulder-to-shoulder bullshit. And two... Oh, yeah. Like, that's when the meat department and shit, they're putting out all the fucking clearance stuff. So, like, the other day I was there, I was getting, like, fucking $5 racks of ribs, $2 yeah. packs of ground turkey, 3 or $4 packs of ground beef. Um, You know, I think I, get, I got a pack of steaks for maybe, like, 12 bucks. What's that freezer looking like? <clears throat> Packed? I mean, it's, yeah. So, obviously, um, you take that shit home, throw it in your freezer, it's good to go. So... Um, that's the thing is like, we got that bitch stock. We got, I got bread in that motherfucker. I even got a gallon of milk. Like, I didn't know you can freeze a gallon of milk. What? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, cause I went to, I had to stop at the store in town here in Genoa. It's like it's Miller's. And while I was there, I got on their little app and they got, you know, cause I, that's my thing now too. These days, now that they're fucking just price gouging everywhere, <laughs> apps is the way to go. McDonald's get on the fucking app. There's twenty percent coupon or free fucking Big Mac or whatever the fuck. That's the way to go. Stop going through the fucking drive through. Smarten yourself up. Use the goddamn apps. That's just the way to go. But um, I just looked to see what they had going on, and they just had a coupon for um a free loaf of bread. We didn't need it, but I was like, it's fucking free, so I'll take it. Put it in the freezer, and then it was another <laughs> thing like a free gallon of milk with a ten dollar purchase. I'd rather have a free more. gallon of gas. That was easy, so I was like, we don't need the milk either, but I was just, I did my Googles, and they're like, you can freeze it, just pour out like a cup's worth, because it obviously expands, so um, you don't want it to be all the way the fuck full. Or I need a, a follow-up of how that comes out. My parents, because they used to freeze milk too, it's just, it's good to go. Um, I mean, I, like, I believe you, I just never did it. I mean, we'll see. I've never done it, never we'll see how it goes, it. but... There was a kid in my childhood that drank slushy milk. So, I hope you don't know him anymore. I don't, but he lived in the trailer park I grew up in. So. You fucking dodged the bullet. The guy, if you're drinking slushy milk, you probably you know think about Spread stuff like, cup. man, Sometimes I wonder what human growing. flesh tastes like. Could be. Um, but yeah, you gotta make the fucking moves these days. You gotta, gotta, gotta hustle and get it. Cause like I said, a lot of price gouging going on. So you get there in the morning, they're going to put out the fucking shit from yesterday with the clearance stickers on there. And obviously it's not the fucking fresh, the fresh, but toss that in your fucking freezer. It's good to go. It'll last until you need to fucking use it. I mean, today I went there cause I forgot a couple of things, three pound of ground beef for nine bucks. I mean, Dude, that's right, not bad. Right now, like 15, it's fucking you know? great. That's what I'm saying. 15, 16 bucks. So to shave off five, six bucks, I mean, you got to take that all day. And then, like I said, um, you know, unfortunately, these days, like going to McDonald's or getting pizza and shit anymore, it's not the fucking cheap option. There's no cheap option anymore. But if you're on the app, all these places too have them now. And they got all these fucking coupons. And then you rack up these fucking points and you're getting all kinds of free shit. And it's just, you know, knocking 20, 30% off your order. It makes a fucking gigantic difference or like I always order pick up like on Marco's site and they've got all the fucking deals and shit. Like if you're paying full price for shit anymore, you're, you're an idiot. So who would have thought the world would have went the way of the speedway points. Yeah. I mean, I've been shit. using the M you know I mean? <laughs> from Meyer. You guys go shop at Meyer at all. 
So, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, and perks, and that's one yeah. other thing too. Is like, gas has been fucking pain in the ass too. But like, I'm getting eight, nine, nine hundred points, thousand points at Kroger. You're shaving off eighty cents to a dollar off off gas per gallon, which is yeah. awesome. So, um, yeah, just gotta do it up, man. Like them, them, and you go on them apps too. They got fucking coupons for days. No one fucking sends out paper coupons anymore. So these people that are just going in there and just buying shit at uh, a just didn't want to download the app or you know B because like Kroger like every week, dude. There's fucking like six hundred coupons to go through, and a lot of it's bullshit. Like obviously, I don't need any fucking Maybelline makeup fucking coupons, but maybe. Fucking, Sort through that shit. You find a lot of bangers, man. Like fucking twenty five dollars off a two hundred dollar order. Like they'll fucking throw that in there. It's like you just got two hundred bucks. It's so easy to hit at the grocery store. That's what I'm saying. It's fucking twenty items anymore. But still, you know, if you can fucking save your your pennies, man, you got to do what you got to do. So uh, those of you out there, get on these fucking apps for real. It uh, makes a difference. Wise up, but, um, <clears throat> Dylan. Uh, I don't know if you want to. We're gonna jump in the mill. Or do you want to kind of get into um, some of the gambling shit? Because that was another thing at the top of the year. Um, you know, you and I fucking jumped in balls deep. I mean, pretty much everyone in Ohio, basically, especially when the shit first started, because yeah. all these fucking books were just handing away two hundred bucks, you know, at a time. So um, we can get into that. We can get in the mill, whatever, however you want to do it. I mean, we yeah, I don't have like an intro for the gambling aspect yet. Just wanted to feel it out and see how it would go. Um, I can always add it towards the end of the mill, kind of segue into the gambling talk. Um, if you want to do it that way, we can probably. What kind of shit are you gambling on? I'll, I'll do my. Like, what do you like? My locks. Anything you really feel confident in, man. It's your money. Spend it how you want to. I like horse races. I mean, we've done it because when, I mean, because me and him, we would uh, get on Xbox and shit and just fucking at the time. I mean, football had just started to fizzle out a little bit, so we were getting into basketball. We got into some fucking like tennis for a little while. We were <laughs> we were following this fucking Chinese tennis player, dude, for about two three days in a row, dude. She was fucking winning us some goddamn dough. But for the most part, it was basketball. Um, I got a little bit into baseball, but around that time, then that's when I started really getting my fucking dick kicked. So I was like, all right. I need to yeah, get let's, let's not get it twisted now. The I lose fast my house as here. your your bankroll climbs is just as fast as it declines. So yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, I saw you change your name from shit. Parlay I bought, a, I bought a PlayStation Five. I bought a PlayStation Five with you know with my gaming money, and uh, you know a few other things like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I was riding riding that shit pretty hard. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, your your luck does definitely run out, and. Uh, but it was fun. I think what made it fun too is like I was just saying, like for probably the first three or four months of the year, I was gambling with house money. So obviously that makes a whole world of difference. Doesn't hurt nearly as bad when you lose. <clears throat> but uh it's I mean it's fun, man. It's annoying, you know, at times. And uh but man, what a rush when you when you do and like I remember we were on one night I had a Cleveland Cavaliers parlay I was on with with Dylan and it hit like pretty late into the game and that was like a seven hundred dollar win man it, it was pretty fucking sweet yeah yeah I mean I've been following like that one guy that does like the ten day ten k challenge and we got up to like probably six hundred bucks and it felt like in in reality you're only losing ten dollars because you're constantly rebetting your winnings and like that your real money is only 10 bucks that you've built on over those bets that you've been placing on those like small plus 100 parlays i feel like a most generous explanation Dude, if you were, if my, you won more money that's what you had what do you mean i thought i lost my house when that last one didn't hit that's what it felt like it feels like you lose your fucking house it's like god damn it. 10 bucks there goes my mortgage god damn it yeah it fucking sucks but uh like bobby said uh we do have some gambling now in Ohio, and therefore we're going to add gambling content to TSP. Uh, with that, it's going to be going on to, um, well, since these episodes drop on midnight Mondays, uh, you hopefully are listening to this before Monday evening, Monday night, for the Monday night football game. Big NFL fans here. So me truly, or yours truly, I should say, um, D'Lo is going to have some D'Lo locks, all right? The D'Lo Monday Night Football. Well, tell them before we jump into that, though. Tell them, tell them, because you had you had the D'Lo's daily lock during NBA season. I did. I mean, and you had 
pretty i mean you got your ass kicked for the first probably four or five days <laughs> absolutely demolished <laughs> but you ended up going what 16 and 7 right it was something like that. Head in my bio. Oh, damn, that's bio good. I went to go around, you, you went on a fucking like a, a roll there for a while. And, yeah, um, there was like 12 in a row at one point. I was on fire. Um, yeah. The analytics were on my side. Um, and it was yeah, just... Yeah, let them know. Like, you don't just rate. pick the shit on a whim. Like You do your research every day yeah. and kind of see what's going on. And obviously, he'll explain that. It'll be every week. We'll do. He's going to do a, a D-Lo's Monday Night Football lock. Might throw in a couple other things, too. I'm going to kind of give you guys some shit. I pulled because I, I follow. I think Dylan, you follow him too. Parlay Science on mm-hmm. Twitter. Um, they got some shit that they're doing that I'm, I'm riding. So I'll, I'll throw that shit out there if you guys want to ride, or if you, Dylan throws the shit out there and you want to fade it. Obviously, that's that's a thing that you can do as well. Right. Um, and then we'll kind of keep tally on on how he does um, alongside of that. But based off of the info I have, like I said, he went 16, 7, 15, and seven somewhere around that range uh, for basketball. And uh, that's not even your main sport. You know, you're a football guy. So right. uh, I, ex- I expect, you know, that same level of, of dedication and, and research. And hopefully you can go on some runs, man. Yeah, and win yourself will... money and win the, and the people out there, you know, some dough. 100%. 100%. Hopefully. I mean, the research right now, it's going to be tough. Each year is different. Different teams, different players, different cities. Um, so, I mean, the data from week one. And even so much this the month of like September really is going to be kind of wishy washy. Um, as we get into October, you can kind of like find more reoccurring uh, themes that you can kind of you know lean on. Uh, but week one is going to be tough, um, and you'll see that. I mean, I'm sure people will fade it, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, do you want me to get into that Monday night lock now, or do you want me to? Hell yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking it, so let's. Yeah, might as well. All right, everyone, just turn their cameras off. Don't leave the stream, but just turn their cameras off. We'll pop this bad boy in here. We can still talk about it. Um, let me get this off here. And the Monday night football lock for the first ever week one NFL action. d is going to have Dalvin Cook over. 41 and a half rushing yards that is currently sitting at minus 114 on FanDuel. Um, some research here, uh, but like I said, it's going to be based on last year's numbers. It's week one. We'll see how it goes. But as you can see here, over has hit 19 of his last 25 games played. That's a 76% success rate, ladies and gentlemen, and I like those odds. Buffalo has allowed 104.8 rushing yards in 2022. That's yards per game uh, to their opponent. Uh, Yes, that's a stiff number and amongst the top half of the league in allowing those numbers. Uh, But we're only asking for 42 yards out of Dalvin Cook. Um, I I think he can get that number here. Um, Not to mention New York Jets. It's a New York team. All right. Playing on Monday night football in. I know it's New Jersey, but it's a New York team. But it's going to be also on 9-11, okay? 9-11 being the anniversary date. It's going to be a powerful atmosphere under the lights. Uh, Brees Hall is questionable. I know a lot of people probably are going to be wondering, what about Brees Hall? Young rookie last year. Coming off injury. He's questionable. Most likely he's going to have limited snap count. Um, if he does play, I think there is rumors in Scuttlebutt that he might play. Um, but I think if he does, it's going to be a limited snap count. I think Dalvin Cook starts, and uh, he could have over 41 and a half by halftime, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm smacking this number at minus 114 um, with my entire weekly paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> God no, damn, I wouldn't all do right. that. I wouldn't do that, but you know, gamble responsibly. Like you of said it, you got to do it. Yeah, gamble responsibly, of course. But this is D Lowe's Monday Night Football lock for Week One: Bills versus Jets. Dalvin Cook over forty-one and a half rushing yards, minus one fourteen, is going to be that current number as we are talking right now on Fanduel. Yeah, and I just pulled it up just to see because you know lines move and shit. But as of right now, it is the exact. Minus 114 on FanDuel. Um, that looks like that's probably the way to do it. I'm going to double check over here on DraftKings, but I mean, that could move around, especially if, I don't know, I mean, questionable it sounds. So Brees Hall probably is going to play if, if he's questionable. Um, I haven't heard anything on that, but uh, you got to assume he's coming off of 
ACL injury too. So I don't think they're going to want to put him out there and, you know, bell cow his ass, you know what I mean? So especially if you're going to bring right. him, because Dalvin Cook, he's not in some fucking bum dude either. Like, no. he, he, uh, I mean, he's been inj- injuries and stuff have kind of backed him up a little bit, um, you know, the last couple of years. But for that, I mean, he's a fucking beast. And I think easily, I mean, 42 yards, man. Come on. Yeah, that is that is all we're asking here. 42 yards. Like I, mean, I said, I, can, uh, yeah. I feel I'm like he can have it by halftime. He can have it by halftime. I'm definitely time. banging that. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to pull up here what uh, DK has got. So DK, they're, they're a little bit, they went up a little bit. They got over 44 and a half. For minus one ten, so um, I think you might want to you might want to rock with with Fanduel because obviously that's three yards less. So yeah, it's it's a good spot. That's what I use personally. That's what I'm probably going to continue to use throughout this uh, season uh, with the locks is going to be Fanduel. So that's where my numbers are going to be coming from. More than likely, always more than welcome to look at other spots. And even if even then, I do I do have the apps on my phone. I just don't use them as much. Um, I just like how FanDuel is kind of set up. Other than the fact you can't really bet UFC, uh, I think that's a DraftKings exclusive there. But um, going forward, I mean, this is a new segment. I can always add the numbers uh, for what the other apps are for, and I can always say what I'm using um, for reference. But uh, going forward, I can always add those for, for uh, I guess, comparing purposes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is the first. Do you have anything else going on for Football Sunday? I mean, I know this is your main thing here, but what else are you flirting with? Because I, I got some stuff that, uh, you know, I'll probably list off as well. Um, I mean, I got some year, year-end year shit, not for not so much for, like, the, I think, the day. I usually do that. That's what I'm excited for, because usually Sunday mornings, I go to the gym, get on the treadmill, go through the props, go through there, make a little bit of parlays, and that... Now it's week one. You're getting all these extra uh, profit boosts, like 50% profit boost for parlays and all that good shit on week one. NFL Sunday is back promos. And um, so I'll be doing that probably more in the morning. So I don't necessarily have anything for that right now. But I know for a fact that I do have the Browns. I bet on the Browns to win the AFC North this year. That's going to be my bold prediction. Yeah. AFC North champs. I put 20 bucks on it. Not too risky. Um, I got that, I think, at uh, like plus 300. Let me look here. Let me pull it up. I do my facial recognition technology. got to love it. While you're looking that up, I'll, I'll do a couple of my bets. Um, I rock. I do do FanDuel. Um, I, I just seem to have better luck over on the DraftKings side of things. But um, one of their specials that they're running this week, um, it's plus 100. Uh, for Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen to have three pass TDs combined. So I put a little something on that. I'm hoping it'll double. I, I can't imagine. I mean, it'd be pretty nuts if those guys didn't have three. And that's combined, not each either. So it doesn't matter who who does what as long as they can hit three touchdowns. And I feel like between those two, I mean, that's got to happen. But as I've come to know, because I, I, I had a fucking thing with Pat Mahomes on Thursday it was a one same type of shit. I think it was on FanDuel side where he just needed one TD and 250 yards passing, and he couldn't get that either. But I mean, that shout out to Kadarius Tony. But uh, um, I follow some folks on on Twitter and shit. Some of these guys, and um, they put together these. Uh, it's a they do an AI. They have an AI that make put together some of these um parlays, <laughs> and it actually does pretty decent. Like I I don't know where it pulls its info from and shit, but the main one that I've fallen right now is um, where'd it go? Right here. It is uh, J.K. Dobbins over 59 and a half rush yards. Travis Etienne over 59 and a half rush yards. Jalen Hurts over a half touchdown. Justin Fields over half a touchdown. So, I mean, that's uh, that's going to get you plus 2020. My, my, it's probably, I, and those guys have a lot of followers and shit, so it's probably going to be a little bit less because I'm sure a lot of people banged on that. But uh, I like those odds right there, you know. All those are two solid running backs. And then to have Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts be anytime TD scorers, those are two dudes that are always doing it on their feet. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see what's going on with that one. 
and then one that I put together too. We'll see. Uh, this one I used a bonus bet on, so you kind of you kind of get a little more, you know, frivolous with the shit. But I got Cleveland Browns money line, Nick Chubb anytime touchdown score, Deshaun Watson anytime touchdown score, and then Nick Chubb over sixty four and a half rushing yards. And that's for plus one thousand. So uh, I like that. You know, Nick Chubb is that motherfucking boy. So you know what he's gonna be doing. And I mean, I imagine Deshaun Watson's got a chip on his shoulder. After, you know, he's got a lot to prove this year. So, and he's another one of them guys that he does a lot of shit on his feet as well. And then uh, got a few more here that I like. Um, this one is a plus ten thirty three four pick. Uh, Justin Fields over fifteen and fifty eight and a half rushing. Brian Robinson Jr. over fourteen and a half rushing attempts. Lamar Jackson over 49 and a half rushing yards. And then this one, uh, I have Nick Chubb over 76 and a half. So uh, I definitely like that one as well. And then I have um, this was from uh affiliate of, of Parlay Science. I can't think of the name right now, but um, one of the final ones I got is they think they got Calvin Ridley on there hitting over four and a half receptions. They think he's going to come out. I mean, you know, he got suspended all last year for gambling, funny enough. So this will be his first game back, so we'll see if he gets unleashed. Uh, I got Justin Jefferson over six and a half receptions. Uh, Mike Thomas over three and a half. We'll see if that dude's, you know, brittle bone motherfucker, but if he can stay on the field, I think he'll get his. And then uh, DK Metcalf uh, over four and a half, and those four will get you plus 685. So um, there you go. That's some of the shit. It's going to be fun. A lot of that, because, uh, you know, DraftKings, they, they had like a – I think it was like 50% deposit, um, you know, bonus shit. So a lot of those are like bonus plays and stuff. So um, if they don't hit, you know, it is what it is. But um, it's it's going to be fun, man, because we got fantasy football as well. You know, shout out to the Al Grabowski Invitational. And then to have some, some money on the line, too, uh, on top of uh, maybe the biggest Browns season opener in the last 20 years, it's going to make for an absolutely awesome football Sunday. And uh, your boy's going to be frying at some fucking wings over at my boy James's house. And uh, very much looking forward to that. So that's uh, kind of wings. I, I, love, I love football. What, what do you mean? What kind of wings you making? I don't. Fr- fried? You're not going to smoke them? No, nah, huh? We ain't got that kind of time. <laughs> We're going to fry them bitches. Get it going. I got, I got, you mean, you've seen the sauces. We got some sauces. Yeah. going to try. See what's going on with those. And uh, I hope they turn out, and uh, it's going to be great, man. I mean, I love watching football, but every week, I mean, that's the thing, too. Uh, I, before football started, what would carry me through the work week is what the fuck I'm going to make over the weekend. And now with Football Sunday, I always like crafting my, my menu during the week and making some shit happen. I think in a couple weeks, we'll get some chili going. You know, that's, that's a staple. Um, obviously, buffalo chicken dip, all that kind of shit, but I like to change shit up. And uh, I'm excited. But D'Lo, uh, go ahead and uh, pull up what else you got. And I think, why don't you pull us back up too? Yeah, I'll pull that up. Like I said, the D'Lo Monday Night Football Lock, week one, Dalvin Cook over 41 and a half rushing yards, minus 114 on the fan duel. Make sure you uh, let us know if you're uh, writing in the comments below, if you're going to be, uh, you know, fading or writing with D'Lo locks this year. Bring us back up into the mix. Bang. I'm back in the mix. Bobby's back in the mix. And we'll add Joe as well with the overlay. Bang, bang. With my other bets, I do have the Cleveland Browns, like I said, winning the AFC North at plus 390. I also have the Cleveland Browns over 9.5 wins at plus 108. Mm. Um, With other stuff here, I got the Browns. Obviously, these are my Browns picks. I'm a Browns fan. Um I got the Browns money line tomorrow. They're going to beat the Bungles. All right. You can't spell Bengals without an L. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) You can't spell Browns without a W. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I do have a parlay, though. I do have a parlay, an anytime touchdown score parlay uh, for the profit boost there. A three-legger. Nick Chubb, one touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, one touchdown. Derrick Henry, one touchdown for a a boost of plus 646 on that one. Um, How does that even mean? uh, You're you're running a boost on that? 
I'm running a boost on that. It's a three leg anytime touchdown boost. Okay. Um, with those three legs, I have Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry all have one touchdown. What? So what would that be? Because I don't know if everyone's going to have that same boost. So do you know what it would be without it? Without the boost, it would be plus 431 okay. on FanDuel. So with the there boost, go. got plus 646. And currently right now, as we are talking, uh, we will find the results here shortly. Uh, not during this podcast, but maybe, who knows, depending on how long it goes. But i got a four-legger for college that I'm running with right now with all money lines, Cincinnati, Houston, Oregon, and Wisconsin. Cincinnati already hit. Houston came roaring back against fucking Rice of all teams. Uh, Rice started off hot, came out of the first quarter, 21 nothing, and now uh, they're in overtime, 35-35. Houston can't fucking close the door, uh, but we'll see how that one ends up. Uh, Oregon, they got their shit together. They're about to win that one in Wisconsin. They're in a battle right now with Washington State, 22-24, um, with nine minutes left in the fourth, and that's going to be the one I'm kind of worried about unless Houston uh, drops the ball here in overtime. Uh, that one should hit, and that was a good profit boost at 621, plus 621 uh, for that four-legger. Um, and that's what I got going on right now, so it's good shit. Good fun times. Uh, throwing some uh, money around responsibly, of course. Well, let's um, we'll jot down. I mean, well, I mean, the main one we get definitely keep tabs on the money nighter, but we'll jot down, you know, how shit went on these picks and see what kind of money we made. Hopefully, we made some fucking some dough. That's always the goal, and then um, you know, we'll see. So, you know, if if people see that we're we're uh, especially if the money nighters hit, people see you're legit. I think that's gonna help. The show as well, and and you. That is true, and to add, add some credibility, and I, you know, across the horizon, I did place, I did win a bet on Coco, winning the um, U.S. Open for women's singles at plus one hundred. Um, I got that one, and then uh, just recently hit the over fifty three and a half for the Texas Alabama game that hit. There it is. So right, I'm not a loser all around, people. I got some dubs, and hopefully we can get one Jesus. on Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, stay along. You know, I, I know not everyone's into the gambling scene, but uh, those that you are, I know it'll be uh, you know nice, nice addition to the show. And like they said, that's something that me and Dylan got into at the top of the year, like a lot of people in Ohio. But um, now that it's football, it just adds another fold to things because being a Browns fan, usually season's over by about October. So, having gambling and shit. Um, to kind of keep things interesting, we'll be good to go. But um, Dylan, let's uh, let's jump into the mill with what we got, and then we'll close out uh, a hell of a first episode back um, on the air. Let's uh, let's do it for old time's sake. Why don't you? Oh. <laughs> There you, there you go, go Joe. Joe. You missed Jesus. that? All right. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Good to my I'll nightmares. Start off right now with the first uh, around the mill with Dill for season six. Let's uh, look back at statistics, why don't we, for TSP or Talking Shop at the time. Um, while we were gone, the numbers kept going. I mean, you people were listening to us even though we were gone on a hiatus. Uh, and we greatly appreciate that, whether it's new listeners uh, accidentally tapping in and or uh, people just, you know, missing us and kind of tapping back in and kind of refreshing um, when we made the announcement that we're coming back and whatnot. But nonetheless, the numbers were still going so much so we surpassed while we were gone 16,000 plays and streams. So uh, currently at 16,231 total streams um, across all platforms there. Um, and we've gained Spotify followers and that we're always preaching. Make sure you follow us wherever you listen to us on. If they give you the option to follow, subscribe, make sure you hit that follow subscribe button. If you like the episode, love the episode you listen to, make sure you hit the heart, like share, whatever they have uh, available on that platform. Uh, it definitely helps the algorithms out and help us get into uh, new ears, um, and constantly grow this TSP community. Um, and do it the old school way too, man. Tell, tell a friend, or you know, yeah. do a retweet or whatever the fuck they're called now, um, on, on Elon at oh, Elon World. A re-X. Um, 
reposts or whatever the hell they are, you know, whatever that shit is. Um, you know, and just interacting with, with the shit itself is always a help. So, um, who knows? I don't know how we got these people to pop in while we were gone, but hopefully they liked what they heard and uh, they'll, they uh, are going to come back through for season six. I know we're going to have our, our usual uh, suspects and um, I already talked to most of them. I'm very stoked. But uh, yeah, I keep listening. I mean, 60, we're at 16K. So hopefully by the end of season six, we'll be well over 20K, which will be really cool. And uh, we'll keep it rocking, baby. I got some other shit going on here. Um, we got yellow jackets invaded my house. Okay. Yeah, they're rough. I got stung by one uh, last week. It somehow got up my pant leg and just fucking zapped the shit out of my leg twice. <laughs> it died. Like it died today. an absolute painful death because I was pissed. One landed on Jamie today outside. I flicked it and I watched it break in two. Yeah, send him to it. another dimension. It's it like just sends Gohan chills. Sell junior shit. <laughs> yeah, chills up I my spine. No bees. When they fly by your ear, you hear the like right by your ear. <laughs> Fuck all yeah, that. Dude, I can't stand it. I can't. I'll put off mowing my grass until I take care of these nests. You know what I'm saying? So, but I actually, um, I paid for a pest control plan, and you know, pest control plans aren't cheap. If anyone has anyone, anyone has done these uh, plans, uh, they are hundreds of dollars. Uh, per time they'd use it so i guess my question to follow up that how much would you pay uh, to have someone take care of something that you fear what's your top dollar i would weigh out what my premium is on my home insurance and flip a coin before i burn it down or pay for that bill i'm not playing bees not fucking with bats a rabid raccoon burn it down start over that's fair. How are you, Bobby? I what I paid top dollar to get rid of. Yeah, something, anything that you, if you could well, pay for I mean, something. I to, for something already had an fear. exterminator come here because we had fucking like mice inside my walls. So, Dang. shit, you could have found a cat outside. We do have a, we do have a cat now, but I mean, I had him lay a bunch of traps and shit, and it worked. Because when you know we're out here in the country, so those Dude, fuckers come in here. I killed a mouse at work on accident Friday. My bad. I never seen him, but I could <laughs> fucking hear him. So, well, you know those uh, time to, like, dryer vents that go outside. Mm-hmm. Apparently, if you don't have anything covering that hole, they just crawl. That's yeah, like we a do. prime spot for them. I don't crawl. know where they came in, but we got traps all over this fucking place. And uh, well, they're not yeah, even traps. Those, they're, just, like, uh, they're lures. Like they got some like poison fucking shit in there, and they eat it, and go back to their fucking nest and die so maybe get one of those like we do have a cat style here, little doors now for them i got yeah. you yeah um, little door they open up. we did have i did contemplate because we had we had a fucking wasp problem last year and i contemplated calling somebody out because we had a nest in like a weird ass spot but i was able to get it taken care of but something like that um that's, good. that's probably really about it Okay. Robots. Where was the nest at? It was like, like in. I don't know. It was like inside of a fucking like outer wall, like outside. It was a bitch, yeah. but I was able to get some fucking killer in there. I've done yeah. some shit. Apparently, where I've seen on TikTok. You just put gas in like a fucking plastic container and just hold it up to a mm. nest. They just fucking check out the fails of that, that shit, though. I like would never do it because you got, I mean, you got to get right fucking there, but. You should see how many people pretty... fail at it. Like, there was like one successful video you probably saw. The same one dude puts the shit up to the nest, kills five of them. You should see the one where the guy dumps the gas on his face and then gets stung. He just <laughs> fucking's up all around, dude. He falls off the ladder. <laughs> he's on the ladder, drops the shit, gets the gas on his face, and then starts getting stung. Jesus. Are you a professional, man? More on the mill here. Rumorville for video games. GTA 6 is rumored that it has cost Rockstar 1.5 to $2 billion to make this video game. And we're going to reap all the benefits of it as the rumor has it to be costing $150 
to f- to buy the video game itself. That is the rumor out there on the street. Um, I think it's more of a marketing tactic to gauge um, who would actually pay $150. Like, I don't think it's that like, big of a rumor. What, um, what benefits are we, are we reaping in that scenario? Because that I sucks. I was just being sarcastic, yeah. Well, so like you're talking about being 150 bucks. It, I could see that happening because uh, there's been some news about Diablo 4, right? And it was 70 bucks. Right, which is you know ten more dollars than normal. Then you know we've had sixty dollars games forever. Uh, they're going to do an expansion for another seventy dollars. So it's like rebuying the game again. So one hundred and fifty is not that crazy to me. You know what I mean? Because the last one came out in twenty thirteen. You know, GTA Five came out a decade ago. So one hundred fifty bucks really doesn't seem that crazy. I mean, it's bullshit. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to pay one hundred fifty dollars for a game, but I could see them trying to do it. It's, you know I mean? it's still pretty shitty. It's uh, kind of getting away from. I mean, look at this else, shit. I mean, it's been all over my fucking for you page on TikTok. Like this new NBA 2K24 game, you can pay to max out your fucking my player now, and you pay can to pay play. to like, pay, like it's like uh, um, like the past shit on on COD where you buy, you can like surpass all these levels and shit. Like you can just pay to go right to the end. So like you buy the game and you'll spend another like. 200 bucks or something then you got maxed out everything and all, all that shit and it's just like what the fuck is the point man if you got it i guess if that's what you want to spend your money on we're out here spending yeah, money on game i don't got so. it and, I, and a lot of us don't <laughs> got it so it's just it's, that shit's not not fun man that sucks a lot of people were excited about this game too because like they're supposed to revamp but like they didn't really change shit i mean 2k and madden have been kind of on, on that same wavelength for yeah, for long, 20 you know, fucking years. It's just like make the same game and then you're gonna they're gonna bust your ass on on um microtransactions. Yeah, that's why I always say I mean like I don't need to get man twenty four, I already got man twenty three, you know. Like all it is an updated roster and I can just snag that off of a uh community share file. So I just grab that new uh, updated roster. When was the last big man update? You know what I mean? Like Fuck. when it was that wasn't like a like a generational thing, like an Xbox One to like Series X. You know what I mean? Like when was the last one? You know what I mean? When was the last uh, one for them? Maybe it's ten years ago. Four man, ten. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's been okay. forever. Yeah. If, like I'm not big into Madden. I I get them every once in a while. It's probably been a minute. But at the same time, like, what's the point? What the hell. Yeah, I, I get yeah, it. I haven't grabbed it yet. Usually, I, I would have grabbed it by now, but um, I haven't grabbed it yet. I don't really play a lot as is. Um, and that'll probably be something you know where it go. Well, it won't probably won't be thirty anymore. Probably like forty, you know, around Christmas time. But when it's closer <laughs> to like half price, and um, kind of go from there. But yeah, man. I mean, it's just uh, that sucks. I mean, I, and like. Everyone's stoked for NCA to come out next year, but fuck, man! I know there's gonna be some kind of microtransaction involved with oh, that because sure. they gotta they gotta pay all these fucking college players now. So they're when gonna, was the last one of those? Was that, was that 2014? The yeah, last one of that? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then I mean, if it's anything like Madden, you know, they're gonna copy and paste that shit, but just make it college. I mean, it's just gonna be fucking pointless, but. That's just video games in general anymore, man. I mean, I just nothing really, you know, changes, you know, rocks the fucking forefront anymore. I, I think everyone was excited about that. Was that Star something? Starfield. Field? And it seemed like that was pretty hyped, but now that that's out, people are already kind of like, it's all right. On that, I'm gonna play it here and there, but I mean, it definitely looks like a uh, a game made by this. What fuck? Did they make Destiny? Is that the same? Same no, thing. it's the it's Bethesda, and they did like uh, Skyrim and Fallout. Uh, Fallout. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's cool. Company. It's got a lot of shit going on in it. So I mean, I know you guys are into different shit than I am when it comes to games, but it's it's very it's entertaining. But it's kind of rough on PC. I gotta get out. I have a pretty decent computer and it still runs shitty. I gotta, I don't know, just wait. <laughs> wait for him to optimize it better, I guess. Right. But, 
And some oh, other no. things here. There's a new side item at McDonald's. It's not the snack wraps. Oh. Okay. They're not bringing those back. God forbid. But speaking of, dude, BK dropped their like snack wraps or chicken wraps and shit. Now it's kind of, I was like a little excited because I'm like, all right, I don't know why nobody's like fucking taking advantage of McDonald's just dragging their feet and coming out with fucking, especially because like chicken sandwiches and chicken whatever is like the wave right now. So there should be like a chicken wrap. BK came out of this shit. They fucking suck, of course, because it's Burger King. I tried like the spicy one. I mean, maybe the other ones are okay, but the spicy one was absolute ass. So. What's the one through like 10? Somebody like that knows what the fuck they're doing, like Popeyes. Like they, if they came out with like a chicken wrap, the absolute flame. They don't fuck around over there. You know what I mean? Dylan, you know what it is. I know you fucking, you know, dip your nuts in that black and ranch. You know what's oh, good. The black and ranch is the best. I went over there after uh on Thursday after my um uh, my DOT physical because that's the only time I'm over on that side of fucking town. <laughs> and it sucked. I mean, it took probably 30 minutes to get through the whole line. You barely passed your blood pressure test. Let's go get a sandwich, bucket. That shit no, the blood pressure test, I never got any problems with that. You might now. Uh, uh, it's regulated baby um fuck it i'll die for that chicken sandwich but no um Jesus. it took forever to get through that bitch because i mean it's cherry street fucking <laughs> popeye you gotta go to the other one man you gotta go by my trap house is, is uh i went and got it man I, I, that's that's just so good but yeah uh it's hard to der- derail but that as soon as you said that i was like man pk just they had their shot again to take advantage of just because people have been clamoring for mcdonald's like dude bring that motherfucker back they keep bringing back the wrong shit. They finally brought back that steak bagel, and it's stayed around, which has been great. But people want that snack wrap, and for whatever fucking reason, they won't do it. They want the snack wrap, and they want those um, them uh, them chicken selects, dude. I think I don't know if you remember, Dylan, but Joe, you probably do. Remember them fucking chicken tenders they came out with? They were fire, dude. I think they were called like chicken selects. They were so they were like, fucking. They were good, like dude. actual chicken yeah. tenders. Yeah, maybe they got rid of them because they just show like, all right, the rest of our chicken products is it's <laughs> clear as day. We're not using some fucking real shit. Well, compare that but to like a McChicken. You know what I mean? You're like, well, they like swipe those pretty and pretty quick too. And I know that they were sound pretty good because I know a lot of I people fuck with them heavy. But they pulled them off the the, the menu and they haven't even seen the light yeah. of day. But um, go ahead. Sorry. Usually the best things though that are only either a limited edition, limited time, or just. They just never come back for some reason. I don't know why they take away this stuff like that. Obviously, people are buying a lot of. So yeah. I think this is the fact. Uh, shit. I did some research on that snack wrap. They said it was store full time. Difficult. Now. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Whatever. But yeah, the new side item is not what anyone was really even clamoring for to begin with, as uh, they're going to take a more healthier approach and add sweet corn to their side items. Get the fuck out of here. Swear to well, God. I mean, I believe you, but like, why? McDonald's? McDonald's? You want to make corn cob? Corn. No, not corn on the cob. It'd be like a bowl of corn. A little, little size bowl, side bowl of corn. What the uh, fuck? We get a six so, piece. Uh, yeah. I'm going to sub fries for a bowl of corn or a mick corn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, it's mick something, right? <laughs> Mix sweet corn. I don't know. It's just whatever. It's whatever. Who's making I mean, these decisions? Have you seen I, they're like their latest like fucking like um like promo campaign right now? Like if I don't know if you've, if you've been there the last couple weeks, but on the bag you'll it'll say like this McDonald's bag has been seen on Jurassic Park and fucking this movie and that movie. And it's like no fucking shit, dude. You're McDonald's. Who cares? You gotta, Flex silence, like yeah, you're, you're global, very dog. much. We know who you are immersed in pop culture for the last fifty years. No fucking shit. You don't gotta tell us this stuff. What movies you're in? Not some fucking startup restaurant. You're the fucking king of fast food. Fuck yeah, off. Bring fucking... back the snack wrap. <laughs> they're probably saying that in Long Island too, man. Long Island. Wendy's had a fucking, like fucking fire ass chicken wrap too. Then you bring those fucking things back. I don't know why the ch- the chicken wrap game just went to fucking shit. They have like off the map. 88 McDonald's on Long Island alone. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you got uh, right here uh, in on Woodville Road, there's fucking, I think, three or four. Yeah, you got the I one in Genoa, Northwood, and 
I guess what else? Every town needs one. It's like a dollar maybe general. There's only two, but I thought there was like three or four. Maybe if you keep going into Elmore, maybe. Probably. What's next? Last thing here before we wrap the episode up is that uh, it's just a little pet peeve I found out that I had. Um, so when you're like in a car, okay, and you're driving up to the grocery store and, you know, you stop at the stop sign that has the pedestrian crosswalks and people are coming in and out of the store, okay, and you're in your car and you wave them through and you make eye contact so they know that you waved them through. And you know what they do? They look like almost frustrated in a sense, like do like a little like ugh kind of face and like wave me through like I'm in their way. Like, bitch, don't try to trump my kindness, okay? Don't try to trump it, because that's bullshit, all right? Not only you're now wasting my time, but you are trying to trump my kindness by trying to wave me through after I already waved you through. Like, just bitch, go, all right? I'm in the car. I'm in no rush. You're the one that's walking, especially if it's, like, starting to rain outside or whatever. Like, that kind, I understand. They don't want to walk out in the rain, so they're kind of waving me through because they're not going to cross. But there's, it's a completely different thing if you're like, I wave you across, and then you don't, and you want to wave me across and said so you can walk. Like, do you not trust me that I'm gonna like stay still as you cross? But I don't know. What the I mean, I don't know. Man. Of mine. Are they uh, old? Don't... It could be anyone. I don't care what your age is. I mean, it's like don't waste my time. I've already stopped to make the time for you to cross, and then I've waved you through, and then don't act annoyed because you waved me through. Like, what? 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 What the fuck are we doing here? You just wasted like 10, 15 seconds of my life. I could have been out of my car and in the grocery store one night a minute in my car wow. by that time. You know what I'm saying? Yes and no. I wouldn't put too much more thought into that. <laughs> fuck it, man. Well, we're doing, you know, we're doing I know what you're saying, but podcast, fuck it. It's, it. it's just not worth it. I get it, though. It is like, come on, man. Yeah, I take already... energy from that and put it into the fucking bring back snack wrap campaign, all right? <laughs> Bring back the snack. I mean, like, it's whatever. I'm not going to make your own anyway, snack wrap. So. Sell them. You don't fuck with the snack. You don't fuck with snack wrap. Is that everybody's telling me? I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I would. I don't know. Not really. I don't really fuck with McDonald's as is, but especially now that they're fucking English muffin egg sandwiches are fucking four dollars now. And I want to say I did a good deed. OK, while I was at McDonald's, I did get an English muffin. I did find out that they were three ninety nine now. I don't remember that being the price. Obviously, inflation, but they asked me to round up. Do you want me to round, round up your three ninety nine to four dollars to the Ronald McDonald house? And I was like, absolutely. Wow. So I did my good you're, deed. You're on your way to sainthood with your penny donation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a penny goes a long way. Okay. No, Especially the fuck if you add millions, millions of pennies across the world with all these McDonald's around. If everyone just donated no, a penny. No, fuck that, dude, because I would not do that anyway, even if it is just a penny. Have you ever seen those Ronald McDonald fucking little cash stands outside the windows and shit? Pay attention to those, man. You'll see the same fucking dollar bills and, and shit sitting in there for fucking years. They don't do shit with that. Maybe they can't do anything until they have a certain amount. Better yet, why like, is what this am I gonna billion do? dollar company in my money? Fucking crumbled up dollar through the washer and a couple pennies. Like, no, Fuck. don't come to me until you have an X dollar amount, and then you can all give it in a lump sum. Fuck Maybe that's the case. Because I wouldn't want to go walk up and be like, you, you, this got, is you, get your, you get your Egg McMuffins. How do how you order them? Because if you're not ordering off the app, pop a, pop a dunce well, I mean, cap like, on yourself. Now that we've had this episode, maybe I'll pop up on the app. Because I haven't been doing that, and usually I don't get the mu- the uh, English muffins. I usually go with like that the steak, egg, and cheese. Stop saying that. Stop saying yeah. that. Yeah. What? You either get the egg McMuffin or you get the sausage muffin. You keep calling an English muffin. You're not going. You're, if you go to the window and you're like, "Let me get an English muffin," those guys are fucking no. pissing in your food. <laughs> They're probably pissing anyways, dude. All high schoolers. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's probably right about that. No, they're uh, not. When you fucking roll through at 4 a.m., they're sleeping. That's true. But I don't know, man. I usually, I'd usually say Mc, McMuffin, but there's, sometimes they just don't understand me, I guess. But they give me a different, like they give me a biscuit or something like that. Or like some right now, shit. this morning, because I, I ran through there with Jax this morning. They had a coupon, uh, $2 breakfast sandwich. 
And at least the Janola location, I'm sure it's location by location, but the Janola location, you can get um, the like the pa- the chicken patties that they put on like their regular chicken sandwiches, not not the McChicken ones, but the fat fucking chicken breast patties. Mm-hmm. You can get those on a biscuit or a McMuffin or um, um, what's the fucking bagel? Uh, syrup infused shit. Oh, that's a McGriddle. Yeah, McGriddle as well, which I've done a couple times. That's fire. I definitely recommend that. But I got one of them. I got a chicken McMuffin with cheese on it. Two bucks, dude. You got to use the app, bro. Ton. Otherwise, that bitch is like five bucks. I yeah, see. I, I open the app up. Are you talking about that ads featured in meal? Is that what you're talking about? Where they, yeah. Like, there's all it's sorts of stupid. It's like, dude, why do we need to know that? We know you're all over the fucking planet. I usually went to like Chick Fil A for breakfast there for a little bit. I'd spend like twelve, thirteen bucks on a meal. Chick Fil A is actually probably the only one that doesn't have an app with deals on it because they're. How many of those do you have on your phone? Is the real question. What do you or what? Food apps. I don't know. Probably one one for any of them. Really, it's stupid not to. Man, I'm telling you. I don't eat out that often anymore. Well, yeah, you got the fucking smokehouse going, but fuck it. I really don't either. But when you do, it's just like it's, it's I'm with it. Yeah. Pay full. I mean, full price anymore. I mean, even when you save it, it's barely even. You know, close to what it used to be five years ago. But it's just it's better than not. All right, Pete, the dollar menu. And that's yeah. It. Look at the fucking McDonald's. I mean, they got the one. They got the one, two, three menu now. And they like, even the drinks now are one twenty nine. They're not even dollar anymore. They're one twenty nine for around the middle. Uh, whatever. Oh, okay. Let's get us out of here, Dylan. Yeah, I mean, shit, man. My job. What an absolute. Uh, what an absolute banger, man. Return episode. Where you guys are getting two hours of, of some solid shit. I mean, we hit. Pretty much everything. I thought we, you know, it'd be about an episode and a half of playing catch up and shit, but we were able to touch on on everything. You know, why we left, why we're back, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and like I said, we will have some guests along the way. But I mean, this is the fucking formula right here. The, the three boys, we're doing it up, and you hear what you hear in the background too. We do have a new theme song on the way from our boy Hollywood Sav. Um, coming very very soon he's cooking it up he's crafting it up and i know it's gonna be an absolute fucking banger because all we heard for the last probably what two three years done was who's that on the theme song the theme song's fire i love the theme song and he's only gotten better since so it's facts my expectations are fucking sky high and i know he's gonna exceed them because that's just what the fuck hollywood sav does shout out to sav um and shout out to you guys Thanks for you know being patient and, and kind of riding riding with us. We're back. Very excited to do it. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see what's going on. Don't forget D-Lo's Monday Night Football Lock. Ride with it. Fade it. We'll see how it's going on. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, ride with the boy and you're going to you know, make some change. So I'm going to keep an eye out on, on the food talk. We'll definitely be bringing that every, up every week. And uh, we'll be touching on a little bit of everything. And you know what? We won't be touching on. So um, with that, D'Lo, Dylan, you know what the fucking time it is. Yes, sir, Ski. For the first time back in season six, thank you all for tuning in either on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you catch your podcast at uh, TSP. It's glad to be back. We might have been a little over the time we wanted to, maybe a little over each other or whatever the case is. We're just excited to be back in the, you know, 420, no, 438 days since our last episode dropped from today that we are recording. So, you know, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to smash that follow, subscribe, like, share, comment. If you you have any ideas of what you want in future episodes or what you liked in this current episode everything helps algorithms out so you can help us get to new ears out there for me to bend thank you ladies and gentlemen have a wonderful night day evening whenever you're listening to this um and be safe out there and we'll catch you for the next episode for the big 150 for tsp ladies and gentlemen we are out Thank you.